If you drive an EV, you can save a whole bunch of money on your cost to commute. Gas is expensive, electricity is cheap, but is it always cheap? Or is it sometimes the same price or even more expensive to juice up? That's what we're going to discuss. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. I'm joined as I much too often am. I mean, if we're being honest, Randy Kirk from the Randy Kirk Experience. I think that's the name of his channel. And uh, we're going to discuss a series of articles I found this week, specifically about this. This one is a good starting place. The cost of driving electric car up to twice the price of fossil fuel. Wow. Motors without space, motors without space at home to charge their cars are facing prohibitively high costs at public facilities. What's your first blush impression before we get into it? My first blush impression is, is this the United States or are we talking about Europe? We are talking about Europe. That's what I thought. I don't think you're going to find it twice as high here. No. In the U.S., it is, my math says, around 40 cents a kilowatt hour is break even with gas That's in it. most markets. Okay. Um, there are places where charging is more than 40 cents, but there are places where gas is also much higher too. Yeah. Uh, if you're not on the supercharger network, you're paying more. Mm. I've seen I've seen Electrify America stations get up to 70, 80 cents, even a dollar a kilowatt hour, but those would be in peak times for, for really fast chargers. So this one is, Britain's public charging network is so expensive that the cost of driving an electric car is now up to twice the price. The UK has more than 12,000 rapid or ultra rapid stations, a 40% increase, but the cost is an average of 80p per kilowatt hour. So it's like 90 cents, 95 cents a kilowatt hour, which is... Uh, but their gas, uh, but their gasoline's around seven dollars, right? It, it still ends up yes, but my thirty-eight cents was using four dollars a gallon. Okay, so if you're at ninety yeah. cents, yeah, you'd, yeah, you, you'd you'd need to be at about ten bucks a gallon for it to be. Right. So it ends up being cheaper to gas your car. Mm -hmm. But a lot of these rapid chargers are owned by fossil fuel companies. Mm -hmm. BP owns a bunch. Others do as well. It's not in their best interest to make electricity so cheap that they can stop selling oil. Mm. Prices at rapid chargers increased 5% over the past year. And also in England, and this is something that uh, Quinton, what's his last name, uh, from faircharge.org has been pushing. There's a VAT tax, a value-added tax mm. on public charging, but not on charging at home. And that needs to be normalized. That would drop the price of charging significantly in public. So if you're looking at it that way, if you don't have home charging, Randy, and it costs more than gasoline, are you going to switch? Well, yeah, I could still switch because, you know, what percentage of the time am I actually using those public chargers? But no, if, no. If you don't have home charging. Well, if I don't have a home charger. A lot of people well, do not have home charging. I see if I don't have a home charger. Well, I guess I'd have to, then I just have to do the math. Assuming, assuming everything else being equal, same uh, benefits of, you know, the same, uh, you know, uh, entertainment, you know, center, the, you know, just go across all the features and benefits. If I've got roughly the equal vehicle as the gas car and I don't care about the environment, then I might start looking at that cost factor. And but I also got to look at the cost factor of repairs and my time that I spend getting those repairs done. So lots of stuff to think about. It's no longer an easy decision nope. is what I hear you saying. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. If I, yeah. Don't, if I don't have home charging. If you don't have home charging. Right. So uh, this one is uh, unfortunate. I'll be running my diesel car until it falls apart, says motorist who cannot afford to make the EV switch. And what, this was the first one I saw and I thought, boy, that doesn't sound. And then I said, well, he's quite young. So maybe he rents a motorist who drives a diesel says he'd be fully willing to make the change. He simply can't afford it. He's a secondary teacher in Limerick. Uh, and he, tr uh, the travels he undertakes means his monthly fuel bill has doubled. So even spending twice as much on diesel, it's still cheaper. I'm spending 40 to 50 euros a week and it could have been half that before. Uh, I'm doing 250 kilometers round trip back to Galway at the weekends now. Uh, it's a case of my job being further away from me, farther away. I have 30 minutes of driving for work that takes as much as the trip to Galway would. So there's a carbon tax. And I thought, well, oh, they had in Ireland, they had 
a 5,000 euro incentive. It's been trimmed to 3,500. Mm. That, that doesn't make up enough to necessarily make the switch. Now, why doesn't he, you know, he's a teacher. Why doesn't he have a house? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you saw he's quite young. Mm -hmm. uh, so average, just, yeah. Yeah. Average salary uh, for a teacher in Limerick is about 50,000. Oh. Uh, yeah. Yikes. And that's, yeah. And according to Payscale, it could be as low as more like 35,000. Oh, wow. Wow. 70,000 an hour. Yeah. So uh, 31,000 would be $34,000 a year. Yeah, $17, $17 an hour. Yeah, and it's like, well, yes, but the house prices are only, you know, 300 grand, Yeah, which is quite good. Not if you don't have a down payment. Yeah. And, and, at, 30, and at 30 grand, yeah. you do not have a down payment. And if you're not married and you don't have a second person to, you know, to, to be uh, participating right. in, the, in, the, in the effort. Well, okay. So then the other question becomes, I think I might have seen you post something about this the other day, that in Europe or in some European countries, it is absolutely required, at least your HOAs, or maybe it was the United States, that you, most states, that's what it was, most states at least in the United States have rules that your HOA cannot keep you from uh, putting in a, uh, a charging a charging station in your house, in your, in your parking mm. spot. But I don't know about the apartments. There ought to be similar rules. I imagine that it's just like everywhere that everywhere has different rules, right. and especially if it is just an apartment, um, what would it cost to put it in at an apartment? It'd be prohibitive. I mean, you'd have to have a commercial contractor come in. What are you going to spend twenty grand to put in your own charger that, and you're going to move in three years? That's not a good use of, of money, and it could be. The apartments could have no parking at all. It's just all street parking. And then you're back to paying for public charging, right. uh, which is in many cases prohibitively expensive, sometimes on purpose. So I don't know what we do to align these interests in such a way that it makes sense, but I feel like it's time to do it. I feel like we need to do it. Well, I think, I think you know, as time progresses, I mean, I'm assuming that in Norway at this point, Norway is they probably probably people should look and see what Norway is doing, because in order to get ninety seven percent of the people to buy electric, they're dealing with this issue somehow. Um, we're also going to be faced with, of, of uh, you know, everything that you do in this regard impacts in ways you don't expect unless you think, you know, four level chess and you're thinking out in the future, but you know. The price of oil is going to come down, already is coming down. Right now, we're looking at $71 a barrel for Texas Intermediate. It's going to come down from there because why? Because we're going to be using less of it. And as we use less of it, and there's lots of production. Now, is that going to be next year? Some people are saying it'll come down this year. Will it ever go back up over $80 a barrel yet? I don't know. But overall, the price of oil, as we get more and more electrified, price of oil is going to come down. As the price of oil comes down, what is that going to do? It's going to make gasoline cheaper. So then you you get this same you know issue of how do I make the decision between the two the two products? It's tricky. tricky. Yeah, it's tricky. What are you going to do? Uh, I would say in the comments, what I'm looking for is what do we tell people who are in this situation where uh, buying a, a new car is difficult enough. But when there's no savings or even negative savings, what do you what do you tell them? I guess one thing you could tell them is at some point your diesel vehicle will have no resale value. It will be you will have to pay to send it to the scrap heap uh, because you can't sell it. But you know, making a reasoned, rational argument with someone who does not have the money to do anything different doesn't help. When I was a teenager, my car needed brakes. And I uh, told my friend's dad that I was going to be doing the brake job myself at age 16. And he said, no, 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 no. Take it to a shop. It's, you, it's not worth it. If you screw it up, you're going to die. And I said, that's a, that's a risk I have to take because I don't have shop money. I'm 16. Uh, and I don't want to spoil it, but I didn't die. Oh, there you go. Look yeah. at that. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Just in case, you know, people sometimes like, oh, is it clickbait? Is he going to tell us if he died or not? I didn't. So that's, um, some would say a plus, <laughs> but <laughs> not sure how that works. Uh, so yeah, it's not always cheaper all the time everywhere. I've seen people argue, well, even if you hate Elon, you should buy a Tesla because, um, you know, buying a car shouldn't be an emotional decision. Yeah, but for a lot of people, it is. It is yeah. You're asking humans to change human nature, and humans are not good at changing their nature. That's something that's pretty, pretty, pretty ingrained in us as so, who we are. So the other thing about the apartments and, and condos and whatnot is it seems to me that if you're just going to put in regular 110 or whatever it is in, in England or Europe, if you're just going to put in the standard uh, uh, capacity and not the high the high uh, voltage lines, it would seem to me that that's not that expensive generally to run that uh, to run one outlet per stall. Um, and absolutely. So if you're doing, uh, by the way, they are on 220 throughout Europe, uh -huh. uh, but it's but it's not 220 at like 50 amps, uh -huh. but it might be at 20 or 30 which is still faster than our level one charging. But even if every stall just had level one charging, that's enough for most people. Because then you're saying, now I can drive all week and probably catch up on the weekends or be all caught up. And if I need to make a trip, then I use a public charger. Uh, if apartments just start with something, I mean, we're not asking you to put in a million dollar supercharger we you know dc fast charging yeah. station yeah just give us something could be i mean I, i'm trying to think like $500 would be a lot to just have you know uh you know electric cabling coming you know across and put a box in i mean i, I think $500 would be a lot per unit it it would be it wouldn't be enough because you've got to get all the you know if you're talking 50 stalls, you know, each, each one can really, you probably need to, you can't put all of them on the same breaker. I mean, it would be a whole panel, but even if you told the renters, there's a one-time fee to use these, or even we're going to charge you an extra 30 bucks a month just right. to have access to this. Uh, it would pay for itself very quickly. Yeah, yeah. But but the there it's a chicken and egg problem. Yeah. We're not putting in chargers because none of our renters have EVs. Right, right. And none of our renters have EVs because there's no chargers. Uh I well, feel that's, like that's what a chicken I feel like is, right? Yes. And I feel like, and I, I know I've brought this up before. I know you like Cheesecake Factory, but as many times as I ask you, you still refuse the mandate. <laughs> I guess we'll never see eye to eye. You guys, what did we miss? What did we misunderstand? Leave it into them in the comments below and stay tuned, stay juicy, and I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots on the second date.